Welcome to the Creator Spotlight here on the Spotlight on Fightful. I am Steven Jensen, joined as always by Jeremy Lambert. And our guests, plural, guests today are two of the coolest people on earth. I'm super excited for this interview today. Um, starting off, we have the CBO, the Chief Brand Officer of Jazzwares, who produces stuff from Pokemon to the Squishmallows to, you know, to Halo. And of course, AEW, I've got a lot of his product signed behind me in this backdrop. So I'm a very big fan of the AEW line. And we had some big AEW news today also that I definitely want to talk to you about. Um, we had, of course, being Jeremy Padauer. So thank you, Jeremy, for joining the show once again. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. It's so good to see you guys. Yes. Yes. Appreciate thank you, you very much. Appreciate you coming back for, for a second round with us. Anytime. You can call me back anytime. Tomorrow, I'll be back. <laughs> yes, yes. And both of our guests today, Jeremy and our other guest, Kyle Peterson, are both returning guests of the show. And Kyle is here today promoting a book that recently came out. It is The Complete Guide to Jack's Classic Superstars. It is forwarded by Jeremy Pidauer. And Kyle is, in my, my honest opinion, the most impressive toy collector I know about. So... I have two legends here on the screen with me as an action figure collector myself. Kyle, how are you doing today, man? Thanks for coming back to the show. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's like a family reunion. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I wanted to start off just right off the bat, Kyle, because this book came out this week. It's a really big deal. I, mean, I know you worked on it a long time, and I know Jeremy forwarded it. And I know that y'all's, you know, there it is right there. You, your your history, you were a longtime fan of Jeremy's as a fan of this toy line. What was it like putting this book together and the reception you've gotten so far about it? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's was it been amazing reception so far. I mean, it, it just worked out perfectly to be the 20-year anniversary. I mean, it just seems crazy. I'm sure it seemed crazy to Jeremy that it was 20 years ago this line started. But uh, just a lot of memories, a lot of fun. I mean, it's been a great ride uh, over the last year or so. And I mean, meeting Jeremy finally. I mean, I could talk about that too. It was one of my lifelong goals as weird as Jeremy's because that's one of the weirdest things ever, but it's true. So it's been a really good process across the board. Well, yeah. we talked last time to Jeremy about, you know, him creating and, and, and everything he did with Jazz Classic Superstars and how important it was to the toy industry and especially with, with professional wrestling action figures. Um, what was it like being a part of this book and having Kyle and y'all you know, collaborate on this, Jeremy? You know, it's it's an honor, honestly. You know, I have to say, uh, when I started the toy industry uh, about 25 years ago, it was a different time. Um, while I was utilizing the internet, um, it was still relatively in its infancy. And um, there wasn't a lot of cataloging who'd done what. So loosely, it was understood that Jack Friedman worked in LJN. Loosely, it was understood uh, that there was a history of wrestling figures. But there wasn't a full, real chronological understanding. And so when Kyle took the time to do this, it, it just reminded me the era that we're in right now, it, the stuff that you do matters and it follows you. And uh, it, was, it, it was an amazing experience. I mean, we can revisit some of the, the old days uh, in creating that line and how it came to inception and all of that. But Kyle's covering it today means that 50 years from now, people will be thumbing through that book and remembering things that happened. Uh, you guys will still be alive. I'll be, I'll be, uh, I won't. <laughs> put that out that'll there. Be, no. be great. <laughs> and you know, I, I owe you guys actually a little bit of meeting Jeremy because I met Jeremy at San Diego Comic-Con last year and Jeremy, I don't know if you remember this or not. It was probably a blur of San Diego Comic-Con, but you said, oh, I remember somebody just mentioned yeah, somebody just <laughs> yes. mentioned your name to me, and it was because you were just on this. So it gave me a little bit of credibility talking to Jeremy there and gave him my quick pitch, and the rest was history. You know what? That's a really good point. That's exactly right. I remember it yeah. absolutely. Uh, I had just done the podcast with you guys, and uh, when Kyle came up to me, I, I just his name was front of mind. Of course, I knew of you because I'd seen pictures of some of the things that you had done and accomplished. But tying that to the fact that you were putting this book together, it just it just look, it just helped me understand how credible you are. Um, yeah. And it's it. Listen, it, it's a, a again, it's a huge honor that someone uh, thinks so highly about that line that they cover it in a book. 
And when I started the process of the book, I mean, I knew I didn't know Jeremy, but I'd follow him on social media forever. So I knew I felt like I knew Jeremy without knowing him, not being a stalker or anything like that, you know, but I felt like <laughs> Jeremy would appreciate this. And I had this feeling that Jeremy would love something like this and he'd be on board. I was like, if I could just meet him for a second at San Diego Comic Con, I want to get his seal of approval and then proceed and then give him the final copy later on down the road. How did it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was probably going to ask Amber, the same question. I was probably going to ask the same question you were. How how did the the process of putting the book come really together? And I, I really want to know, like, sort of the day to day of like how much time you spent almost each day of like, all right, I need to work on this portion this day. Like, I I, I really am fascinated by the entire process yeah. of putting this together. Yeah, I mean it. It goes back to my YouTube channel, and I've been doing a Jazz Classic Superstars video every single Tuesday for like four years now, almost four years every single Tuesday as I've walked through the entire line piece by piece. And uh, along the way, I bought a second collection. And I said, you know what? Because I, I wanted a loose set and I'm in on card set outside of, you know, the Rick Flair 1 of 20, things like that. But the normal line, the exclusives, ringside stuff. So I wanted to do all of that. And uh, that's kind of where it started in my head. I said, you know what? I have a total men on card set. I have access to the ones I don't have for a picture. And Jeremy helped with some pictures in the book as well of some things. And I said, I have a loose set. I said, I don't know if there's anybody else in the world that has both of that. And I don't know if they do, if they would ever tackle a project like this. And one thing I've said in a lot of interviews, it's just such a cool thing to me that, you know, somewhere along the way, you know, 50 years from now, like Jeremy was saying, you know, when they look at classic superstars, they look back at it. You know, if you search classic superstars somewhere in there, either my video is going to pop up, a book's going to be popped up. And it's my favorite line. It's the line that got me into collecting action figures as an adult. And it's just a very special thing to me. So to even be tied in just a little bit of that is such a big honor for me along the way. So uh, really amazing and uh, really special for me. I mean, I definitely have a passion about this line. And I mean, I say it in the book and the forward. I mean, I basically in Toys R Us fell to my knees when I saw that classic Superstar Series 1 Ultimate Warrior because that wasn't being done at all. I mean, it, and people forget, like people look at things with 20, 24 eyes a lot of times. They need to go back to 2004. I mean, it was revolutionary. It was totally revolutionary. We never had anything like that. So, I mean, I could talk for days about that. But doing the book, I said to myself, I think I can do this. I think I have an idea. I had a kind of a plan. I showed you my, I think it was Shawn Michaels Series 1 was kind of my layout. If here was my idea. And I showed that to Jeremy. I said, here's what I'm going to do. And Jeremy was on board. We went with it. And, you know, I've talked before. I mean, a lot of people think I just do YouTube and stuff for a full-time job. I mean, I have a 60-hour-a-week job as an executive for a company. So I'm, I'm busy uh, all the time, you know, and I got kids and stuff. They're young. So I want to spend time with them. So, I mean, this book was all done between like the hours of, you know, midnight and 3 a.m. every single night for almost a year. I mean, it took about a year to get this done, but uh, you know, it was a passion project. I've said that all along. I mean, I'm not Stephen King. I'm not going to get a million dollars out of this book. This is not the way it is, but it's a passion project. It's something cool. It's a little bit of a legacy. Um, just a really fun thing. So it was a lot of late hours. That's for sure. There's no doubt. What, what was um like when when Kyle, you know, approached you about this, Jeremy, and you were like, obviously you were in and you were excited to do this. What was kind of, I guess, more of like your like your contributions? I know you did the forward. Um, did you provide any yeah. other like um, information to Kyle like for the book? Well, look, I mean, for me, you know, I've gone on to another life. You know, we started a toy company and and so when it came to classic superstars, you know, for me, it's just an incredible memory and it's just a remarkable, uh, you know, of course, um, WWE still makes an incredible action figure line with Mattel today. But at the time it was Jax. And uh, I think that we really did some revolutionary stuff back at that time, including in 2004, we are uh, 2003 we introduced the concept uh and, and you know as a, as i say in the book introduced the concept to vince mcmahon of uh really leveraging the strength of the of, of the alumni because frankly speaking they had never done it before and we were suffering uh retail was really suffering it was action figures at that time were largely seen as kids product and my perspective was no collectors make up an enormous part of this i know because i would collect myself if i wasn't making the stuff and so, you know, I have I had I have had great access to product for the last 25 years, I can tell you that. But so my you know, for me, it was really more like, you know, would you be willing to write a foreword to a book that's celebrating classic superstars? And I said, absolutely. And he said, would you do a Q&A and just answer some questions about what it was like back then? I said, absolutely. And then um, in addition to that, do you have do you have any some do you have old photos or old footage? 
And of course, uh, you know, I, I absolutely did. So, you know, from that, that's my affiliation. Other than that, you know, this is Kyle's baby and, and he's obviously done a great job. Um, but, you know, from where I sit, just the fact that we're celebrating what, what I think is the greatest line, and I don't think you can beat it. I, I think it's the greatest line in the history of wrestling figures. I think that it's in the same vein as LJN of Hasbro's uh, figures that were feature oriented. I think it's in the same vein of what Mattel does today uh, with their elite line. And I actually, you know, would say that this is one of the most important lines, if not the most important of all time, because what it meant for wrestling, not just what it meant for action figures. It changed yeah. everything in the way they saw their alumni association. Yeah, there was so much. I mean, so much has been stair-stepped off of, I mean, just the ruthless aggression style into the deluxe aggression and stuff. I mean, that was the basis for what Mattel and Jazzwares do right now. I mean, the more articulation, yeah. it was getting to that point. And I mean, if you didn't live it, I mean, it's just like here today. I mean, I hear from people all the time. How do you like those LJNs? They're old rubber dog toys and stuff. Unless you lived it and were really in it, you just don't know. And there's a whole area or world of collectors that the classics were everything. I mean, I tell stories, you know, all the time on my channel about the two packs, the three packs. I mean, it introduced so much stuff that was around. And I always say Jeremy and Todd McFarlane are really the two guys that really introduced, you know, chase versions of things and rare editions and all that kind of stuff. And look where that snowballed between everything. Marvel Legends, you name it. Everybody's got some of that. They all owe a debt of gratitude. You know, to Jeremy here. And I'm not just kissing Jeremy's butt. It's, I mean, it's the truth at the end of the day. So, and Jeremy did, well, you know, he said he did do the forward, the Q&A. He also answered some of my deep questions I've had for hundreds of years. Uh, and he finally answered them in there in the book as well. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a total blast. I, I, I do think, uh, and I appreciate that. I, I think, uh, I think Todd and uh, I think I definitely did contribute significantly to the way uh, modern action figures are seen, displayed, uh, and and how seriously we take the collector business. Um, you know, there's there used to be a fear that if a line had to rely on adults, that you know that it wasn't going to be meaningful, and that that was something that needed to be tossed aside and embraced as a real possibility. So, I want to know in in like recataloging all of this and going through this for, for both of you, I. Kyle, you mentioned like the ultimate warrior figure. Like when you're going back through all this stuff, does anything stand out of like, they really did that. They, they really like made that. This is one of the coolest things they've done. And, and same kind of same question to you, Jeremy. Yeah, for me, I mean, it really goes back and we talk about it. Jeremy talks about it is some of the talent that they got that to this day, you know, we haven't seen from any other company and just the special relationship Jeremy had with uh, the WWF at the time that allowed him to, get Bret Hart. I mean, think about how big of a deal that was. I mean, Ultimate Warrior, such a big deal. We take it for granted now because we get figures on a regular basis, but that kind of stuff. And then the Abdul of the Butchers of the world. And I always throw it out there because it always pops in my head, but even guys like Johnny Rods, who Johnny Rods wasn't Hulk Hogan. He wasn't under the Giant, but to get somebody like that in the line really makes that line extra special to me because that's taking a chance. I mean, Jeremy wears his business hat every single day and taking a chance on Johnny Rods. Let's be honest. He's not going to sell in the same numbers as Hulk Hogan and finding a way to get that in there with different case counts and stuff. So just a lot of stuff, a lot of the business strategy behind it all is almost as fun as the line in some instances. Yeah. And, and by the way, the, the, the strategy drove demand. So the interesting thing about some of the characters, and I know it drives collectors a little bit crazy, okay? When you do limited edition or you do, or you see things as a uh, A talent, B talent, C talent, and then you seed the line accordingly in terms of the supply. Um, but it drives interest and excitement in characters that otherwise you may not want. If we had made Johnny Rods, uh, you know, uh, the same proportion in the line as we had done for Ultimate Warrior, uh, all of a sudden, not only would you not have the interest in the character, but you would have less interest because it was so plentiful. Uh, when you do limit the supply, all of a sudden people want the character that otherwise wouldn't have wanted it. So it really is a, a glimpse into, you know, economic theory a little bit. I mean, it just, it really is. And, and to give you guys a little bit of a background, the way we would do it and the way we still do things and, and a lot of companies do is you you do you bucket into ABC and let's just say you have a master carton of 12 
Okay, so when you ship it a MasterCard, it's got 12, 12 action figures in it. The A's might have three of the 12. The B's may have two. The C's may have one or may have one every other MasterCard. And so that's the reality of shipping, because if you do make the C have the same incidence as an A, I promise you, your line is upside down. You could have a year where you have products still on the shelf. And that's what we try to avoid. Of course, you always can run into that trap again. But with classic superstars, I, I think we rarely ran into that trap. We really mastered uh, the the consumer demand. It was funny. I was right. Out of, you brought up a memory to me. I was right out of college at the time and I was calling on Walmarts in the Midwest and I was calling to store managers and stuff. And during the time, Classic Superstars was hitting. So it was a very nice bonus for me as I'm going store to store doing things. I could look. <laughs> you don't know how many cases I opened up where the Ernie Ladd was not in the Walmart case, but it was in the opposite case. And that, that was my white whale for a while. I found it eventually, but oh, it was so frustrating. But that's what kept the hunt going. And you know what? I know it's frustrating and I do. And I, and I, because I'm a collector, because when I was a little kid, I, so when I was 10 years old, uh, LJNs came out. Okay. And I think it was 1984. Yeah, okay. Right there, so yeah. the LJN, the LJN wrestling figures came out and I would lived in Columbus, Mississippi at the time. And my mom would take me to the store and I would line up and I would, and man, I just, I love the LJNs, my favorite action figures of all time. Okay. I, interesting story, those LJNs, and I would notice, okay, you can't get, you can't get all the figures at once. Sometimes one isn't available. Da, da, da. So I go to Jack's Pacific when I'm 29 years old to head up their entire action figure group, which was a, a whole nother story. Uh, and I go upstairs and I, and I get introduced to the CEO and it's a guy named Jack Friedman. And Jack Friedman and I sit down, we talk, and you know, what, what's attracted you to this job? Well, WWE is one of the biggest uh, th things in my life. Took him through the whole thing, my whole background. Uh, and I had come from Mattel, so I had an, a lot of action figure experience with He-Man, et cetera. And anyways, it turns out that Jack Friedman was the J in LJN. So here I am talking to the guy that actually made all those figures that I loved so much when I was 10. And here we are about 20 years later, and I'm doing it. So now I've got people coming into my office. I'm talking to people, and they're like classic superstars and ruthless aggression and deluxe aggression and adrenaline. Because guess what? Now it's been another 20 years. So I'm now sitting in the position of Jack Friedman, where at the time I was the, the young buck. And I got to tell you, it, it means the world to me. And so this this whole this whole thing has just been very meaningful, this whole time. So I, I really appreciate it to anybody that's seeing this, that finds value in the stuff that we've done. And, and, and again, my greatest and sincerest apologies, because I'm going to still follow the old mission of uh, providing limited editions and chasers, because I know how valuable it is for a line. I know how quickly a line can die if you don't do it the right way. I, I got to put you over real quickly, oh, yeah, Jerry, right. and then and I'll let you ask a, a question. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you guys, are, you guys were mentioning like it was our show that because you were on, you had kind of a reference point and everything. And to me, like when Jensen said, oh yeah, Jeremy Pedaler is going to join us uh, when, when you joined us last year, I was like, are you sure you got the like right person who is joining us? You're, you're talking about Jazzwares, like the head of Jazzwares and Jensen. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he's going to, and you gave us like an hour and a half of your time yeah. that night. And yeah. I was just shocked. I was like, are we, is this real life? Right now, so when, when Kyle, you mentioned uh, me meeting Jeremy at Comic Con and using it as a reference, I'm like, I'm not stunned at all that Jeremy was like, yeah, sure, I'd love to help you out with this because I didn't think you would give us an hour and a half of your time. I didn't think you'd come on this show, and now you're back for a second time. So I appreciate just how personable you've been and how kind you've been to us. So yeah, I was not shocked to hear that. Like, yeah, he's helping Kyle out with this. This this makes a lot of sense just based on the limited interaction that I have with him. Wow. That, no that's question there. I just want to put you over. <laughs> no, listen, I'll, and I'll say this to you. I just don't see life uh, as, a, uh, as a dot on a board. Uh, I see it as a scatter plot. And like if I had lived a hundred lives, I would have been, uh, we could have easily shifted positions where you're leading a toy company. I'm leading up a, a, a podcast that a lot of people hear. 
and, a, and, and establishing an entire brand and franchise around content management. I could have been writing a classic superstars book. I just don't think of life in, in the sense as to I'm sitting here and this is, I just think of it as the, like, we're all in that same universe. We're all in the same genre. Uh, we are all taking on specific roles that we're playing within this universe, but I could have easily and happily been doing any of the things that you guys are doing. And so I really appreciate your giving me those kinds of acknowledgements, but I'll throw it right back at you. I think what you guys do is really cool. And, uh, and, and, you know, Steven and Jeremy, and I think Kyle, you know, putting the time and, and the energy of, of 12 o'clock at night and spending hours working on something when life is hard and sleep is precious. I mean, that means a lot. I hope people really understand that, you know, that's real. That's real. Uh, you know who doesn't understand that necessarily? When you're 20, you know, because you can you can do whatever. You can go out and drink all night, wake up the next day, everything's cool. Let me tell you something. When you get in your 30s and in your 40s and beyond, dude, those nights are hard. Those are hard nights. So doing it on purpose for month after month to put together something that really is uh, such a, a big um, passion play. I mean, honestly, it means a lot to everybody. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned <clears throat> that you, um, you like the, I want to know like some feedback that y'all have gotten from the book and you had mentioned like adult collectors and how that, not, that necessarily wasn't very cool, you know, a long, you know, a while back. And now it's like become cool, or at least in my opinion, it's become cool. I, I, I collect action figures. A lot of people I know collect action figures. Um, and someone that really got me into that. And I've talked to both of y'all about that was Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, the whole, you know, the whole major wrestling figure pod. Um, have y'all gotten any feedback from those guys about this book or this process? Are they a part of it at all? I I actually uh, talked to Matt Cardona last weekend. He was in town here. So I had a, a chat with him and, you know, like Jeremy, I know Matt too. So um, Matt and Matt, great supporter of the book. He bought a soft cover and a hard cover edition. So shout out to Matt Cardona and the team over there. But Matt's a Matt's a champion of action figures across the board. I mean, it, you know, I, because of his stature, you know, he gets a hard time sometimes, but he is a nice guy at the end of the day. And he's just want, he roots for everybody's successes, uh, at least in my experiences with Matt. So Matt's a good guy. And yeah, he enjoyed the book. He said, so. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, those guys, uh, Matt, Brian, uh, they're just, uh, they're full on, the real deal. I mean, they, they full on love the genre of collecting and figural collecting. They know as much as anybody about the history of it. Uh, remember the let it breathe universe. Yeah. Like not only was he spending real money, but he was busting them open so that people could enjoy it. Like it seemed irrational because it was uh, at the time he was doing that, that hasn't been more than just a few years ago. So like he was spending real money to bust those things open. Like, you know, they're the real deal and they've created a brand and they deserve all the good things that happen. And, and you know what? Cardona is a character. Uh, and I mean that literally and figuratively. Uh, he actually is a character, uh, as a lot of these guys are that are that are wrestling. But he's also uh, just a really interesting uh, human uh, and uh Long after the wrestling days are over, I'm telling you, he's going to be a force in the world of collectability. Um, who knows? Maybe he'll have uh, one of the biggest companies in this space one day. I wouldn't put anything past those guys. Yeah. Um, one other thing. Well, I, I had a few more questions for you as well, Jeremy, because I know you're on some limited time. And you had mentioned how important it is to have, you know, limited runs and have things that, you know, people are out there seeking. Today is kind of a perfect day to talk about this because it, this, this will air on Thursday uh, tomorrow morning. But today I saw the, uh, the whole article on comicbook.com about the jazz oh. vault. Um, yes. Can you please talk about that? Cause I've been excited for these ring of honor figures. I'm, I'm pumped on this Claudio and this Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. I, so the vault is, um, our direct consumer, uh, program and we've been very slow to enter this because we wanted to make sure that we would um, put together a direct consumer offering that wasn't just going to be sporadic. Like we wanted to have the downstream product available. So we put together a several year plan of product that every single quarter, you're gonna see new product coming out 
from AEW and from Star Wars and from Halo and Call of Duty and Hello Kitty and Squishmallows and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, you know, obviously one of the biggest brands that we have is Pokemon. We haven't officially announced some of the things that we plan on doing in the future because we're still working through some of those things. But don't be surprised if you see some really incredible stuff. The other thing that we didn't announce today is that we will do some crowdfunding, super high end, exciting things, too. Um, and and so like, you know, and it's not because you know we're the fourth largest toy company now, you know, the, and if you don't count Lego as a traditional toy company, we're number three. Um, so it's not because there's a lack of funds, but we just want to make sure that before the tooling goes out there, that there's the demand that would allow for it. But there's going to be some crazy stuff that we develop and it's going to be adult collector driven. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, we're going to keep the bar fairly low, if, especially in the crowdsource stuff. We're, we're going to make sure it's completely achievable. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff we announced today from AEW, uh, the ring and the ring of honor figures, uh, you know, you saw Claudio, you saw, um, uh, gosh, Kenny Omega. Yeah, yeah, Omega. Absolutely. Sorry. Uh, it's just what happens. I'm 50. What can I tell you? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I think that we, you're going to see downstream a lot more there. Um, and it's, it's just going to be a, a lot of fun. So we're, we're ready to roll there. Do you have any follow-up questions, Kyle, about any of this this news to for Jeremy? <laughs> I bet sounds like I better clear some space for maybe a couple of big play sets, old school Jack's days. We'll see. <laughs> grab like a big box and, and see like what's in it or something. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, open it up. What's in there? Oh, yeah, you know, I, what's in the box? I don't even oh. know what's in this one. You know, am you know, I taking the risk to, to open something that we haven't even uh, announced oh, yet? Exclusive. That'd be insane. That'd be you know that makes my whole that makes my whole life. You know that now, power. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. You guys maybe go through a different question with Kyle about something else. In the meantime, well, I'll just be here trying to figure out what the heck this thing is. How about that? I, I will say if we if we do need to cut anything out, we can cut anything out. So I, I don't <laughs> okay. want you to feel you have That's to do cool. this and then like oh that show and so we can't cut anything that we need yeah. to cut. we, we don't want to but we can leave it here we can leave it in this room if we need yeah, to I, uh, we have to i think that we probably won't have to cut this out oh this is oh oh star wars that's pretty cool see that's uh, yeah, one thing uh, about the vault too that i think a misconception at least obviously everybody that's watching this is probably a wrestling fan a lot of people think the vault is just for wrestling figures and no it's for a lot more than just that and i think wrestling fans get themselves in a bubble sometimes and forget there's more than just wrestling more in the world yeah. you know i will say that the wrestling community is one of the most active communities and one of the most desirable communities to be a part of look at this so by the way so now i have there's, this is the third box. This is the box within the box within the box. <laughs> so we're not we're not messing around. We we really want to do something memorable here. Let's see which one this one is. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, this is a. Uh, oh, did you catch that? Yeah, it looked like oh, one of fifteen hundred. Oh, oh boy. Very cool. This is the oh, um, this is the Starfighter class collection. I, 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 yeah, I realize this is not wrestling. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's still right. sick. If you want to see something that Jeremy recently put out that actually myself and Jeremy Lambert have both touched because Jeremy got it for me at the event. Oh, um, did he come? I, I did not realize this. It got shipped and it was there. So we, we, let's go through the Star Wars uh, figures first here. Jason, oh, yeah, go for it. As, as Pedro is uh, showing them off. So, so this is a set of, this is our Series 4 set that you can only get on the vault in this particular fashion it's got a chase of a uh, one of five thousand it's got the chase and the rare the um x-wing and uh both x-wings so anyways you get the point the point of the matter yeah. is whether it's wrestling whether it's star wars whether it's halo call of duty whatever it may be you we're going to do some really cool special stuff for the collecting community well, you know it because I am a big fan of the AW shop exclusives that y'all do based on oh. AW pay per views. This yep. whole wall, you can't see it, but this whole side wall is all the shop exclusives you put out so far. Just got this one in the mail the other day. This is the sting. Yep. So, very, very cool. And I have a signed one in the mail right now from Jeremy that 
I waited. Okay, months, I didn't so. know if that came. Yes, it hadn't arrived. It okay. hadn't arrived yet, but I got I got the unsigned one already in the mail, like from AEW, and then um I got a signed one also. So I, I doubled up on the on the sting. Really appreciate. I did too. I, I had to get two of those. I got two of them <laughs> myself. And I asked you, you know what else I got? Here's a throwback for Jeremy today. I got in the mail today. I've always wanted this. Never pulled the trigger. Finally got it. The Punjabi prison from Jack. Oh, <laughs> I got I'll that in the story. mail today. I'll give you a story on that. So tell me this. What did you pay for the Punjabi prison match? I got a heck of a deal. Okay. $75 well, shipped. Wow. Yeah. What would that item sell for, generally speaking? That's I a think couple it's usually hundred. Around two, yeah, 200, 225, maybe shipped, something in that vein. So, yeah, that's why I didn't pass on it. <laughs> so, what we used to do uh, back in the day is we would create, remember, it was Toys R Us. Kmart, KB, Walmart, Target. Those were the big five, okay? And I would cycle play sets. I would have a play set that would be launched for everybody. And then I would cycle those play sets and match them with one account so that every account then had a unique and exclusive play set. This was like 2005, six, seven yeah. time frame. Yeah. And Punjabi Prison Match, I remember... Uh, we created that one and Toys R Us went deep. They went deep with this one. Okay. And they were like, man, this has worked every single year. Every year you come out with this other elimination chamber or the regular money in the, you know, bank. Money in the bank, whatever. Every year it was a new one. Okay. Punjabi prison match sold about 15% of the inventory <laughs> and the other 85% yeah. uh, was melted essentially. And so basically what I'm saying to you guys is there's a rarity to it because at the time it didn't have the demand that some of these other sets had. So yeah. I don't know where they are. They may have been melted into one giant statue with a <laughs> dagger through my heart. <laughs> But there's some Punjabi prison matches that, uh, that and I, I love. I love things like that because that's taking a chance, and you got to take a chance in any kind of business. And that's something we'll never probably ever get again. I mean, I don't see Mattel or anybody making that again. You I'm know, convinced. I'm convinced what? the GCW match that Cardona's running with the Punjabi prison, he's going to have a Punjabi prison play set, and, and that's going to be how they hold this match. Because I don't think you could do an actual set in, in the arena that they're running. No. Yeah, That's yeah, I'm very cool. interested to see how the GCW Punjabi prison match goes. Um, oh my gosh. Um, also, I want to really quickly also just mention, uh, Jeremy, that I still don't own any Squishmallows, but I see them everywhere now. <laughs> oh, like God. ever since, ever, oh. yeah, <laughs> ever oh. since our interview, I, I can't get away from them. And I probably shouldn't even admit this. I've hugged many of them and then like, just, like <laughs> put them back on the shelf. Like, I, 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 you. I, did you know I have a complete room? We have a spare bedroom in our house, and it is full of squishmallows. Like literally, Scrooge McDuck squishmallows <laughs> overflowing through. I mean, there's probably I'm not lying, 500 squishmallows in that room. I oh, was unbelievable. Uh, I was second. looking. I be, was looking around simply yeah. because my my daughters will leave their squishmallows in our room. I think there's one on on the opposite side over here. They have a competition to see like who can get more. Uh, all, all the we have twelve kids and they have competition oh. to see who can just have more. That's that's kayfabe uh, to see who can get uh, more squishmallows. There, it's always like, nope, I got it. She got one. I got to get one now. It's a it's a giant. We still a lot of fights. Well, it's I'll like a safe you. room. So it sounds to me with five hundred, you're well on your way to your second book, Kyle. Because <laughs> I, I tell you, I don't even know how you track all that. Oh my gosh. Well, Get you know, our, we, uh, on our uh, vault. Uh, and Squishmallow's direct to consumer site, we are going to track every Squishmallow that we can track. So there's wow. thousands, and, and yeah. I think we're going to provide a very uh, in depth look at what's out there. So that, that's coming uh, down the can, pipe. Can I get a Squishmallow named after me? It would really pop like two <laughs> girls. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The Kyle Peterson watch or something. Yeah, I'll sign on anything I need to. I think it would just be hilarious. So they, they would be. They would be impressed by that. They're not impressed by this. They'd be impressed by that. Oh, they'll be impressed by I think the bio would be like loves to rock, likes yeah. to work late at night. Yeah, exactly. Good hair. That's, That's gonna be the bio. 
That's how I had to set up this interview with, with my kids. It's like, I'm doing an interview at seven and they're like, oh, another wrestling person. I was like, no, this person, this is how I set it up last time. So I was like, no, remember the guy, the, the Squishmallows and Roblox? Like, oh, that guy, we love him. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Any wrestling <laughs> talk, like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Let's uh, debut that as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, the Kyle Peterson Squishmallow. Kyle. Be great. <laughs> Bro, all you have to do is cross out the name and put Kyle. And that's yeah. all it takes. Yeah. I, I will good. say that, uh, I'll do a two seconds on Squishmallows, and I realize this is not the perfect forum for Squish. <laughs> but uh, we we acquired Squishmallows uh, in 2019, about a year and a half after it launched, and um, we we thought, man, this this is a very interesting brand. Then we did some studying, we did a little research, and we found that it wasn't kids; it was adults; it was older age consumers. And so we we tailored our messaging on TikTok and other social media channels, and it just it just absolutely blew up. I think we've uh, I think we're nearing three hundred million Squishmallows sold units, uh, which is uh, kind of outrageous. It's almost impossible to wrap your head around. I know we're five hundred <laughs> MR. I know we're five hundred yeah. MR. Yeah, exactly. I believe it. I believe it. I can't tell you how many times I've been just like walking down an aisle somewhere, whether it's like the mall or just like the store or anywhere. And me and my brother usually like we'll go shopping together. And I always mention, I'm like, I know that guy. I just like, you like, I just like, you know, I know that guy. You know, and I, I point, I point at the squishmallows. And my brother's response is always, then have him send you one. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going to just like ask him for free squishmallows, but like, I, I, but they're so soft. I like, I, I pick right, them up. And I'm like, these things are very, very, I, I can understand. Send me your address after this. Send me your address after this. Are you going to send me a squish yeah, we'll take care oh of that. My take care oh, of that. my God, dude. Oh, I love that. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very, that's going to, that goes so deep, so many levels that, that my, my brother is going to love that too. Um, but, uh, I don't even know what I was gonna. I don't even know what I was gonna say next. Now, now I'm thinking about these squishmallows. Um, Kyle, I'm gonna put you on the spot real quick while we have Jeremy still. Oh. How important is it in 2024 to have pinless joints on your figures? Oh yeah, give me the pinless joints, Jeremy. Well, the Supremes have them. The They're Supremes beautiful you have on them. the Supremes. Yes, yeah, so absolutely beautiful. But I, I'm hoping that technology gets adopted slowly into the elite line and un, or the elite line, the unmatched and unrivaled lines. I think it's a fair. It's a very fair ask. You know, for us, it was a way to differentiate. Um, but these things are becoming more and more standard. It's it's always, it, it's a, the progression has been amazing, right? Because we went from cartoonish rubber characters to smaller characters with a feature that had some level of articulation, some playability, to uh, really kids' product, but with better articulation, to... to uh, when we went from the beginning of Jax to when, you know, we really focused in on uh, Ruthless Aggression and Adrenaline, then we really got more collector, classic superstars, and then the handoff to Mattel, and then Jazzwares coming in, our company Jazzwares coming in with uh, AEW. Like, every, every iteration gets a little bit more authentic. Um, I kind of feel like we're pushing the bounds of authenticity now, like scale, detailed sculpt, deco. And, and really what it comes down to now is uh, cost. Like you can get more and more authentic, but it, it costs a little bit more. So maybe at some point in time, there's like a super duper, like realistic high end, like as high as you can take it figure line that is the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate uh, celebration. Um, and that that may be a way to do it, but also you got to keep in mind people's pocketbooks, and you know not everybody is ready to roll out some a big chunk of change for a singular figure. But that 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 that's the interesting uh, move. It's always been towards authenticity. Although we did try a couple kids lines along the way back in the day. We did face flipping fighters, maybe the worst line of WWE figures of all time. Uh, uh, Kyle did not do a book about face flipping fighters. <laughs> We're working uh, on it. Slow, slow book. <laughs> and we did pump and flex. You remember pump and flex? Pump and yeah, flex. Okay. Uh, so pump and flex was basically you would do this with the arms, and then the stomach you would see would become very like like you'd see the six pack and stuff like that. It was like a rubber that would go over the stomach. On the back of it was like a tooled item. 
but that rubber started disintegrating like seconds after being manufactured. So if that's set on your shelf realistically for a couple of years, you're a pump and flex doll. So if anybody's got a perfect pump and flex, I want to see that perfect pump and flex. I want to see if anybody can pump and flex. I want to see that. Don't send me any weird stuff. I want to see that. <laughs> Jeremy, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, let everybody know where they can find you at and everything that's going on at Jazzwares. Yeah. So, um, gosh, quickly about Jazzwares. You know, like I said, we're we're in the top four toy companies. Uh, we're the global partners for brands like Pokemon, Hello Kitty, Coco Melon, Roblox, Fortnite, uh, so on and so forth. We we own Squishmallows. Uh, we were acquired by Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, so Warren Buffett's our boss now. Uh, this was this happened last year, and uh, it's been it's been an incredible dream to go from uh, you know I started Wicked we start we started Wicked Cool Toys 13 years ago. We we uh, sold uh, to private equity in Allegheny and Allegheny and Jazzwares in 2019. And then together as partners, we sold to Berkshire Hathaway. And, you know, for me to stay here as the chief business officer, working with Judd and Laura Zaberski, who are our CEO and president, um, it's just been amazing. So Jazzwares can be found at Jazzwares, basically on any channel you're looking for. If you're ever looking for my wisecracks, you can find them at Jeremy Com on Twitter or at Jeremy Padauer, P-A-D-A-W-E-R on Instagram. And that's, and I drop a TikTok from here and there, but they're pretty lame. And that's, that's pretty much it. Do you do like dance TikToks? What's that? Do you dance on your TikToks? You do yeah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm doing them right now. Awesome. Hey. Well, hey. Great. I hope that's not a meme. Really. That would be the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Uh, well, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I appreciate you for coming back on here again tonight and hopefully we can get you on again sometime in yeah. the future um, to talk more collectibles and yeah, NFTs sure. and, and all that good stuff again. So listen, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I think you guys are awesome and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to come back. So we'll figure this out. And uh, Kyle, you wrote you, you did a great thing. That, that book <laughs> is terrific. Um, thank you for including me to write your forward. I hope that you have great success with this thing. And thank you for covering uh, a, uh, an era that had really changed not just action figures, but wrestling. Just remember this. If it wasn't for classic superstars, I don't know when and if they would have really understood the power of the classic roster. So every one of those guys that were at independent events signing whatever, T-shirts, figures, apparel whatever it may be or getting booked in general like a lot of that was due to the fact that that their merchandisability was recognized and uh and i'm very appreciative to to my time at jacks and i'm very appreciative to wwe and what they did at the time uh so anyways guys thank you so much i'm gonna drop off i know kyle's gonna be here for a while and uh thank you so much i'll see you thank guys you, soon Jeremy. great Thanks, see, you, Jeremy. Jeremy. See, you, see you later this year maybe in san diego Oh yeah, Sandy. Uh, I'll be. We'll we'll have a huge uh, booth at San Diego Comic Con. We have a lot of exclusives, including AEW. And uh, please, y'all, whomever hears this, feel free to come by. Ask for me. I'll say hi. And uh, if you bring a book by, and Kyle's there, he'll sign it. And if I'm there, you probably don't want my signature. So that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, but it's all good. I, I'll sign whatever you got. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks, See you, Jeremy. Bye. Later. Oh, cool he's the man. He's yeah. the man. He's the man. Oh, well, Kyle. Now let's I talk just, bad about him. I just noticed the t-shirt. <laughs> you still seeing Riho out there on the pegs? Dangerous. It's getting dangerous. Three left in my area of my like 22 stores I hit regularly. I got three left. That one may be a sad come, day. That one may become the Pujabi prison of the AEW but, line. You know, she's back on TV pretty regularly. She was like main event last week. So it's time for that blue repaint. I think it's time. Let's keep that streak going. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. What What are you looking forward to most right now as far as like stuff coming out? Like I know you, you cover, I mean, I guess we'll stick to wrestling, but like I guess yeah. for, like wrestling lines and, and figures, what, what are you most looking forward to right now? Yeah, I'm, I mean, keeping it with Jeremy a little bit. I'm excited for this vault to see where that all ends up going. Um, I've been in meetings all day until I got here, but I haven't read the comic book article yet. And I don't know if they got too deep in the weeds quite yet on it, but I'm hoping 
I, I, this is for GI Joe fans. There used to be a GI Joe kind of figure of the month kind of thing back in the day. I would love to see the vault try to do something like that. Don't give us 10 things at once, but give us, you know, maybe one figure for 20 to $30 a month or something. I would love to see something like that in the future. Uh, I'm excited tomorrow as we're filming this, or I mean, it's Friday, I guess, uh, whatever day this is. What is time, as I always do say, but Friday is the revealed thing on uh, Mattel Creations. So excited to see that CM Punk. And I think they have some other things in the works as well. And then, of course, Mania is just right around the corner and we're going to get an onslaught of stuff and our pockets are just going to be crying because we're going to see so much stuff. And then you follow that up as just as that starts to kind of wear off, San Diego Comic-Con hits and then you just get flooded once again. And So it's an exciting time right now in the figure world and the wrestling figure world for the next couple of months. I'm, I'm looking forward to that CM Punk. I, I'm the biggest CM Punk hater you'll find in like wrestling, wrestling media, but I buy all of his all of his things i buy all of them so like um i'm like i'm like a hate watcher for when it comes yeah. to cm punk it's funny um but i'm looking forward to more of the mattel creations and, and then maybe doing like vault, you know, these vault creations and stuff i was you know i was bummed out about the uh the mattel wcw thing that fell through for like a lot of reasons one that it didn't happen but two then it seemed to like the trickle down screwed us all out of the ray mysterio we wanted the mask was ray yeah. you have any idea what the hell happened with that it must have been somewhere in the WWE or something. There, there's somebody said no, or maybe Ray himself. I mean, it's it's a wild thing. You know, I hear it in the comments of my videos all the time. Maybe probably more than you guys do, but like I get every day, why doesn't Mattel make this guy this guy? I'm like, <laughs> trust me, Mattel wants to make Legion of Doom. They want to make every Legion of Doom under the sun, but they can only do what they're allowed to, and they get a lot of flack for that. And same thing with Ray Mysterio. You're not telling me Bill and Steve don't want to make that. I mean, they have they showed it to us. Right. They want it to come out. It's just somewhere in the WWE machine, somebody said no. And I don't know if it's one of those things that maybe once Ray finally retires, it would come out or what. But yeah, pretty disappointing because we've got a lot of Rays. We, we're, well, let's be honest. There's been a million Ray figures. That is a unique Ray figure for sure. Yeah, what we're talking about, Jeremy, just so you know, if you don't know, or the people that are listening that may not know, um, there was a, 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 a like how do you the, Mattel does something where you basically you you buy ahead of time but enough people have to pitch in for them to even make it and they did this for WCW with the ring this whole arena set yeah, up set. yeah I remember and, yeah I covered this and one of and one of the figures was a masked Rey Mysterio and that wound up not happening but there was a separate figure that we all saw pictures of that was like made like a like a prototype of a maskless Rey Mysterio with the horns from WCW and we all okay. got super hyped up on it and then when the ring didn't happen, that they basically just seemed like they transferred that masked ray and put it in the like the slot of when the maskless ray was going to come out. So now we're all like, "Where's the maskless ray?" Haven't heard anything yeah. since. And well, that's yeah. what they said. This was a way they got around it because those were all Ultimate Edition figures. This is going to be an elite, but it's the same gear, same everything. And that's what they're going to do. I think all those figures that we saw for that stage will get an elite form. We just won't get an Ultimate form. Is I think what'll happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember the the set and they tried to basically crowdfund it and I didn't quite understood how that worked. I'm I'm not into the figure game like y'all are. I actually wanted to ask Bedauer about the he mentioned the the pump and flex uh figures. You guys remember the maximum sweat yeah figures? Of course. Yeah, you like I really wanted more. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to know the thought process behind that because those those yeah. even today like baffle yeah. me, but as a kid, I was like What's the point of these? It's what are we doing? The gross out figures. I mean, there was tons of different ones, and that was kind of the WWE's take on gross out figures, basically. Yeah. I yeah. Like, what, what are we doing there? Next Who time wants we have to clean up a on? mess of like water when you're done playing with your toys. <laughs> <laughs> and Next they, time we have an hour on, uh, we got to ask them about the the maximum sweat. Jensen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it came. I don't care. I don't remember if the thing was full or not, but it definitely said sweat on the little tube that you use, like. So it was like you filled the sweat with yeah. water and then you put you put it in the thing. And yeah, that was such a that was a weird that was a very weird one. Um, like they were trying to trying to make figures of anything and everything. I mean, that was certainly where a period that WWF was as hot as you know they've they've ever been during that time. So I don't blame them for trying to pump out as much as they, they could. Yeah, it is what it is. I get it. Um trying to think what other what other action figure lines outside of WWE or outside of wrestling right now are you like really are you really stoked on that you're really collecting hard right now? 
being an 80s kid, the G.I. Joe classified line is always near and dear to my heart. So I love G.I. Joe. I mean, I've been a lifelong G.I. Joe fan, really. I mean, He-Man got me into action figures, and then G.I. Joe went from there. And then wrestling and G.I. Joe ran side by side pretty much to this day. And uh, there's a lot of fun in that line. A lot of good memories and cool updates and things. So that's really, I mean, that line really has stolen a lot of thunder from, I think, Star Wars Black Series and Marvel Legends even. So pretty popular to the Joes, and I'm right there on board for that. How, how are you feeling about the Ninja Turtles lines right now, especially the um, the NECA figures? Yeah, it's it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, however, there was uh, leaked images of the planogram for Holothon next uh, month, and it's at Target. So it looks like, I think I did a quick math, and it was like $700 worth of new NECA Turtle figures coming out next month. So I'm like, geez, why don't you just bombard us? Because it seems like there's been a little bit of a lull outside of a couple of figures for a while, and now they're just, bam, here it all is enjoy so i've got you know rules like everyone i don't know what your rules are very you know you collect so much i don't know i, I don't know how you exactly determine what you do and don't collect i've got an, i've got an important rule everybody that's one of the questions i always get is what is your rule for collecting and my number one rule is if i can't display it i don't need it so that's i don't have totes of things i don't have storage i don't have a storage unit uh, if i can't see it what use is it being here so that's kind of yes. my rule that's a good rule. And, and my rule for the turtles is I collect specifically for secret of the ooze for the, for the second movie. So I get like, uh, I was really hyped up. Like I actually got, um, you can't really see it. It's, it's signed, but I got the, uh, Ernie race jr. Um, signature on his, uh, like the pizza boy, um, yeah. one that he has. And then I got the, uh, the other one with the foot clan soldier. So like when they got his likeness, I was like, Oh, this is sweet. Like they're finally making some of these characters that I've really wanted. Then I saw they're going to be coming out with the, uh, like the professor, like the, yeah. with the ooze and all that stuff. So I just unboxed yeah. him. I, I I got him a couple of weeks ago. Oh, did you? I didn't even know that was out yet already. I think uh, it was a long pre-order. I mean, you had to pre-order it, but apparently if you go to NECA online right now, they must have some stock left so you can order it right now on their website. It's not going to be sold in stores. They said, Oh, okay. Gotcha. I need to, I need to get on that. The it's cool. How, I know you're big on like the packaging and stuff. Um, how important is that for people? No, like like for instance the the kino that behind me came in like a pizza box i thought it was really cool how they like package all that together just made it even more special yeah i love i mean i'm a primarily loose collector i mean i just because of space and room i mean if i had everything mint on card or mint in box I, i'd be i wouldn't have room i mean it's just impossible so but at heart i'm a mint on card guy i love mint on card i do have some collections mint on card but the packaging you know i love uh, seeing leaked images of the figures or the images that Mattel shows us, for example. I love that process. I love the pre-order process. As long as I get my figures on the pre-order, I guess, you know, <laughs> there is that. But I love that. I love getting them in the mail. I love opening them out of the mail. I love sitting down at the review table. I love sitting. I mean, it's a whole process for me. It's always been that way since I was a little kid. The packaging, I would soak it in. I would look it over. I wasn't one of those animal kids that didn't even look at it, ripped it open. I would be Oh my gosh, look at the back. Here's the file card. I mean, it's always been an important part of my reviews. And some people say, just get to the figure, skip three minutes past the box. But to me, a toy reviewer looking at a toy, whatever you want to call it, it starts with that packaging. And I love the packaging. I, I absolutely do. It's sometimes it's just as fun as the figure. Yep. And then you bust it open and see you later. <laughs> so yeah, then it goes to the recycling. Yeah, it's, it's tough life sometimes. <laughs> Any any hidden gems, wrestling or otherwise, you found in stores since the last time we talked to you? Uh, nothing that jumps out. Um, you know, for the most part, all like the vintage lines and stuff, I'm pretty much where I want to be with that kind of stuff. So there's not really anything I'm looking for. Um, obviously, if I see a screaming deal out there, I'll grab something. But uh, Kane County Toy Show is one of the biggest toy shows in the United States. I think it's actually the biggest toy show in the United States. It's outside of Chicago. That's in April. So maybe after that, I might find something special out there. We'll see. Um. Before we get out of here, I know we got to wrap up here soon, so Jeremy can cover AEW Dynamite, uh, do his do his real job, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, how how is the YouTube channel? I know you'll plug it here in a second, but how is all that going, man? I know you you film a ton of a ton of content. You mainly film all kind of at one time and then release throughout the week. And one of the things that I love about your channel is the little uh, I don't know what you call them, like the 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 sayings like stuff that you like yeah. you were kind of repeat yourself but like they become like little sayings for your show yeah. and i always catch myself and i get a new figure that has multiple head sculpts i always say choose your own head adventure and it always always yeah. it always makes me laugh to myself um how's the how's the channel going man since the last time we talked because i know it's yeah, I mean, a lot. 
Yeah, we're about a week away, I think, from the four-year anniversary of the channel. So that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, four years. You know, sometimes it seems like it's been 10. Sometimes it seems like it's been four days. And I guess you guys probably say the same thing about the podcast, I'm sure. So it's just kind of the way it goes. But yeah, four-year anniversary coming up. I got a really big giveaway. I guess I'll give you guys the exclusive before I get into it. But I have a, a special figure, a one-of-one one that will be given away. A one-of-one. One. And uh, yeah, so more on that on my channel. But uh yeah. Is it Cody Rhodes? Like like I'm just gonna ask him like a Cody one of Rhodes. No, it's, it'll be a produced figure, but I did a get real. a wow. one of one. So more on that, but I'll give that as part of a giveaway with before your anniversary of my channel and this book. So if you bought a copy of this book, you could be entered in to get this one of one figure. I mean, that's pretty. I want to keep it for myself, but I was like, ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, my so God. that is coming up for your anniversary there, and I think I'm da and I have to hit forty thousand subscribers before I'll give it away. And I, by the time that video drops, I might be there. I think I'm like four hundred away for something like that from forty thousand subscribers. So some good, oh. exciting giveaways to come very soon. That's very big of you, Kyle, to give away a one of one. That's actually unheard of. I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody doing that before. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to knowing what is going on with that. I, and I've been in the DMs with you. I'm going. I'm buying a signed copy of the book from you because people can buy signed copies directly from Kyle. Um, yeah, Jeremy, do you have any follow up? I know, I know, we got to run, but do you have anything else before we get into Kyle plugging everything and? I, I wanted to, much like I did with uh, Padauer, give Kyle some some flowers here in, in that, like, you know, when you were talking about your, your book process um, earlier in the episode, and then last time we talked to you, your process overall of, like, I know you don't seem to sleep too often, but I know you have, like, the 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 the, the shoot job, what we, you know, we like to call things, but, like, that takes up a lot of time. You mentioned you had kids, like, that that's obviously going to take up time. And like to still find the time and the commitment and, and just the work ethic to do everything else. I think I said this to you last time, but I, I want to reiterate it again. Like that, I, I hope that says something to a lot of people. And I hope people uh, Jensen, what are you doing? So what just happened there was um, I collect Funko Pops. One of them just fell off the shelf onto a bunch of other stuff. So that was uh, that was that was figure fate right there. It was a Funko that, domino effect. That oh, was that was a that was a Toy Story type scenario that one of my toys overheard us talking about all this and started moving around. So um. <laughs> amazing. All right. Well, as I was saying, like I appreciate how like your your work ethic overall. Yeah, I think I feel like I said this last time, but I'm gonna repeat myself here because I people who have a strong work ethic just go it it goes a long way with me. So the fact that you were like doing this book from midnight to, to 3 a.m., it was such a passion project for you and you got to your final goal and you, you put it out and everything's gone well with it. Like that says a lot. So I, I appreciate you for that. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I always give props to my dad. I think he instilled a lot of that. I, I think I have a lot of that from my dad for sure. And, and I always say, you know, people say, how do you find time? And I want to start a YouTube channel or a podcast. What do I do? I mean, my answer at the all time, have a passion, have fun with it. Don't care about your views and things. I mean, I, I, you care, but you don't care because you're having fun. And that's what it is. Stress relief at the end of the day. And then they always say, Kyle, well, how do I do it? Well, if you want something bad enough, and that goes for anything in life. You just find a way you, you put in the work and you get there. I mean, if you want it, you'll find the time if you want to do it. So that's kind of my rules I live by. I hope your dad's doing well. Hope he's still listening to Sleepy Brown doing his thing. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, he loves Sleepy Brown still. Yeah, I, yep, he does. Very cool. I, I've never really popped my brother as well because I've, I've told you before that he's trained Sleepy in boxing. Yeah. He does like two classes with him and stuff. So just really, really my small dad. world. Um, Shout out to my dad. He'll be watching this video. He'll watch it. Awesome. I think it's really cool, by the way, how the two of y'all, like how you bring him onto the show and like he was a, it, it still is a collector at heart. I mean, I yeah. guess really. Um, yeah, he, but dabbles. Just, he dabbles. He dabbles. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. The bond that you guys have. Um, and it's even like, you know, my dad's come around a little bit like he, my, my dad has my whole life. He's I think hate is a pretty accurate word. I think he hated my obsession with pro wrestling, with the stuff that I he just wasn't he, he wasn't into it at all. Like, a giant waste of money, waste of time, just you know everything and he's come around more recently a little bit um i think he respects my collection a little bit maybe um but i recently got him a pat mcafee figure um because he listened to the that's one of our common things that we have nowadays is like he likes the pat mcafee show and so do i so we both watch it you know when we talk about the show and stuff so i bought him a pat mcafee figure since he had the basic come out and um my dad displayed it in his new bar that he made at his house recently like he put it up with his stuff and i was like there you go. You're starting your own little collection there. So, um, so yeah, so just, I, I love seeing stuff like that between you and your dad. And, uh, I love that your, your YouTube channel is doing so well, man. I, I know I, I discovered it 
probably around four years ago when you put out yeah. uh, your first big uh, display tour. And uh, I've been following it, you know, all, all the way, all the way since. And uh, to see the growth and to see the community y'all got, and um, you're very authentic. You hadn't changed at all. You're the same dude who who started the channel, and it just keeps getting better and better, man. So I'm, uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing, putting in that kind of work. Because like Jeremy said, dude, I know you have a legitimate job, and you're already kind of in that world of like, yeah. we talked about that in our previous interview. People who may have missed it, Kyle's shoot job lends a little bit of favor as far as like his collection his collecting as well like he knows he knows the game very very well unlike most others so um <laughs> thank thank you again for, well, for being i, I appreciate here. it i mean i think you were the first one to ever ask me for an interview so that's how i know you go way back to the in, in beginning so oh my it's gosh cool. well, this is great this is this 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 this, this whole interview warmed my heart kyle just <laughs> saying that jerry fedora was sending me a squishmallow so I mean, special heartwarming episode, a special episode here today. A very special episode, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kyle, make sure everyone knows. Ao, well, I guess we already did. We already plug everything. No. We, no, no, yeah, plug, no. yeah. Come on, Jensen. Yeah, Kyle, let everybody know they can find you at. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can find me at Sir Paul Six Four on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram and Threads. If anybody uses Threads, I don't know. I'm over there, and then Kyle Peterson nineteen eighty, Kyle Peterson two point oh. Got two YouTube channels. So check out both of those. And then while we're discussing here today, of course, the Classic Superstars book. Soft cover available on Amazon. Cheaper on Amazon. That's where I recommend getting it. Hard cover is an exclusive variant Chase Edition at Barnes & Noble. Uh, it's pricey. I mean, it's about the size of a textbook, obviously. But uh, it is pretty cool to have, that's for sure. Uh, maybe I'm biased. I don't know. But Amazon, Barnes & Noble, exclusive retailers for the book. There you yeah. go. And it doesn't matter again. where people buy it. Like you get paid the same either way, right? Like no matter yeah. how someone yeah. buys it. I, okay, I get so. a couple of pennies on every dollar. I mean, that's just the way the books are, but I, it's a labor I, of love I, at the end of the day, for sure. I'm going to do everyone a solid. And I know you did this in your video as well when you're promoting it. As of right now, at least Amazon, really good deal over there on Amazon. Yeah. Um. So go, go check yeah, that out. And Amazon is actually selling it for the cost to print the book. So obviously they can afford to lose money, but they're still, you know, paying me everything. So, I, hey, that's great. Take advantage of Amazon. Let's take advantage of them. Grab it at a cheap cost for sure. I don't know. How long it I don't have any control over it. So hopefully and forever. If you, and if you want a signed copy from you, best way is just to reach out to you directly. Yeah. Hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I mean, it's just a, a couple of I basically, it's just you're paying for the uh, extra shipping just to get there. So not too much more. So cool. Kyle, we appreciate it. Guys, all the links are below where you can support Kyle, where you can check out the book as well. Um, and yeah, we appreciate you, you joining joining us, coming back on the show. It's great to have Jeremy Pedauer on here for the first, uh, I guess, fourth of the first three-fourths of this interview as well. So we appreciate you guys. It's always great talking to people who have been on the show before, catching up with everybody. And again, thank you for, for everything you do with the, the figure collecting community. Yeah. And uh, everyone, go check out the book. Go, yeah, go buy the book. Back, just let me know. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Guys, thank you for tuning in, and we will be right back here on the Spotlight.